Hidden in the northern Congo Basin, home to the world's second largest rainforest, lies a mysterious swamp. In 2012, a team of scientists from Central Africa and the UK traveled to the Republic of Congo on a hunch. Led by plant ecologist Simon Lewis and PhD student Greta Dargi, the researchers suspected this little understood swamp, known as the Cuvette Centrale, could hold precious peat deposits. Essentially, peat is soil made up of partially decomposed organic material that accumulates over time, often thousands of years. It exists where bits of plants pile up and there's enough water to slow down the bacteria and fungi that would typically break down this organic matter. The peat found in the world's colder, temperate regions is more common and better known. But could the Cuvette Centrale hold peat? And if so, how much? Dargi, Lewis, and their colleagues knew peat also forms in tropical forests in the right circumstances. So on their initial trip to the Republic of Congo in 2012, they began looking for other clues that they were on the right track. Earlier studies suggested the swamp in this part of the Congo Basin might contain peat. Beyond that though, reports had little hard data on its extent or depth or whether it existed there at all. Satellite data helped the scientists pinpoint potentially peaty areas. These places needed to have the right sorts of plants. Water sources were also critical, so they looked for spots where rivers spilled over their banks or depressions where rainwater pooled enough to flood the forests. With this rough map in hand, they set out to ground truth their hunch. Over the course of nearly two years and several trips, the team worked with communities in the area and trudged through the hip deep mud of the peatlands. They traced lines or transects and every 250 meters or about 800 feet, they would stop and take a core sample of the earth. Later on, they would do the same thing in the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. Their hunch turned out to be correct. Examinations of the core samples revealed the most extensive tropical peatland on earth. The peat here covers more than 145,000 square kilometers or 56,000 square miles. That's about the size of England and it spans the border region between the two Congos. Tropical peatlands serve as natural refuges for all kinds of threatened and endangered animals. Forest elephants, lowland gorillas, and bonobos, just to name a few. And local communities depend on the services they provide. Yet it's the carbon the peat holds that has catapulted them into the global climate conversation. Scientists figure this partially decomposed plant matter in the Congo Basin contains more than 30 billion metric tons of carbon. That's about the same amount the U.S. emits from the burning of fossil fuels in 20 years. The team also figures that the relatively small peatlands, which cover only about 4% of the Congo rainforest, hold as much carbon as the trees across the entire rainforest. This carbon is a precious resource. The peat locks it away out of the atmosphere where it can further warm the planet. Climate scientists say that makes protecting that area vitally important. In temperate regions, dried peat has been burned for heat and cooking for hundreds of years, and peat bogs and fens have been drained to make room for agriculture. That's true in the tropics as well. Today, seemingly endless rows of oil palm trees grow on former peatlands in Southeast Asia. They provide the vegetable oil demanded by the global economy and are credited with boosting the economies of countries like Indonesia. But those gains have come at a cost. The peatlands there had been a sink that kept the carbon from the atmosphere. Now, in many places, they're a persistent source of climate warming gases. Fire, too, has become a growing problem. Farmers often burn their land to prepare it for cultivation. But when those fires spread and burn for weeks or months, they create regional and global problems. Fires in Indonesia in the particularly bad year of 2015 released millions of tons of carbon into the atmosphere every day at their peak blanketing the region in haze. Researchers estimate that the smoke from these fires caused at least 100,000 human deaths across Southeast Asia. Central Africa's peatlands are the largest and most intact in all the world's tropics, but logging, agriculture, and oil and gas exploitation have been proposed across as much as 80% of the Congo Basin peatlands. In some places, work toward extracting those resources has already begun. At the same time, the world is struggling to cope with climbing temperatures and the impacts they have. 
To avoid the worst effects of climate change, experts say we shouldn't disturb natural repositories of carbon like the peatlands. Today, Indonesia is working to reforest and reflood former peatlands. These efforts may slow the release of carbon dioxide from the peat. Still, it would take decades or even centuries to recreate peat-anchored ecosystems in these places. Protecting peatlands before they're disrupted or destroyed will spare the atmosphere from vast amounts of carbon emissions. It will also benefit the communities and wildlife that live around them. In 2018, leaders from Indonesia signed the Brazzaville Declaration with the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The three countries have also worked with the UN Environment Program to create the Global Peatlands Initiative. Their goal is to share lessons and foster exchange between tropical peat-bearing nations around the world. Currently, scientists, including Dargi and Lewis, are working to better understand how the Congo Basin peatlands formed and what our changing climate might mean for them. They also want to learn how long-established communities have made sustainable use of this vital resource, perhaps providing an example for managing peatlands responsibly. In part, that's because the threats of industrial-scale resource extraction and agriculture remain. Still, advocates say that with the proper protections, the pristine peatlands of the Congo Basin and the carbon they hold could remain a valuable tool in combating climate change.